What's up and welcome to my point of view. I am your fat and opinionated host and the other day we talked about these four Americans that got kidnapped on video in broad daylight in Mexico, two of which are no longer with us because they were unalived in the middle of the street on video in broad daylight in Mexico. Now there's been some updates in that situation. Originally, it was reported that they were there for cosmetic surgery. Now, some people are saying that maybe there were other things involved and other things going on. But, oddly enough, the cartel, supposedly, they just dropped like five cartel members in the middle of the street and blamed them for the situation and was like, hey, take them. They messed up. Now, personally, I don't believe it. I can guarantee you these cartel members who they say are responsible for this, that they left in the middle of the street to be um, detained by law enforcement, I can guarantee you that they're probably just rival gang members or they're just people within the cartel who messed up and, you know, they just ready to throw them to the wolves. But that's not what this video is about. This video is actually about three American women who recently traveled across the border to Mexico from Texas and they are now missing and they have been missing since around the end of February. Now we've heard a lot about these four Americans who were kidnapped. We've heard a lot about that yet we have heard nothing about these three women at all. Nothing. Zero zilch nada. And you know I'm growing more and more concerned every day about the American citizens who are traveling across the border. I know that there are parts of Mexico that are beautiful. I'm not sitting here under the illusion that all places in Mexico are terrible. And I know that there are cities in America that you aren't safe in. So none of that goes over my head. I would love nothing more than to be enjoying Mexico right now. Out chilling, sipping pina coladas with some beautiful Mexican women. That sounds awesome, right? So I don't have an issue with Mexico. That's, that's the point that I'm trying to make here. But we can't sit here and deny what's happening. A lot of these areas areas in Mexico are not safe. And it's becoming worse and worse for U.S. citizens who are making that trip across the border. Now, these three women were supposedly going to a flea market, which is a point that I was trying to make to you all in my previous videos on the other four Americans who were kidnapped in Mexico that a lot of people don't understand just how open the southern border is. And a lot of people don't understand the way of life for people who live around the southern border. A lot of people down there freely travel to Mexico and back all the time. It's just part of their routine and there's nothing really to it. That might blow your mind, but to these people, it's just another day. Well, these women, travel to Mexico to go to a flea market and they haven't been seen or heard from since. Let's go ahead and hop into this article. Two sisters from Texas and a friend are missing in Mexico after they crossed the border last month to sell clothes at a flea market. The abduction of four Americans in Mexico that was caught on video last week received an avalanche of attention and was resolved in a matter of days. But the fate of the three women who haven't been heard from in about two weeks remains a mystery and has garnered relatively little publicity. The FBI said Friday, it is aware that two sisters from, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce this, two sisters from Pritatas, a small border city in Texas near McAllen, and their friend have gone missing. Police Chief Roel Bermia said their families have been in touch with Mexican authorities who are investigating their disappearance. Beyond that, officials in the U.S. and Mexico 
haven't said much about their pursuit of Maritza Trinidad Perez Rios, Marina Perez Rios, and their friend Dora Alicia Cervantes Sainez, 53, 47, and 48. The episode stands in stark contrast to the government and media frenzy over the abduction of four Americans on a road trip to Mexico for plastic surgery. They were caught in a drug cartel shootout in the border city of Matamoros, and the video showed them being hauled off in a pickup truck. The two survivors were found Tuesday in a wooden shack near the Gulf Coast. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says the three women crossed into Mexico on February 24th, a Friday. Their town is just a few hundred feet from the Rio Grande River. The husband of one of the women spoke to her by phone while she was traveling to Mexico, the police chief said, but grew concerned when he couldn't reach her afterwards. Since he couldn't make contact over that weekend, he came in that Monday and reported it to us, Bermia said. The three women have not been heard from since. Bermia said the women were traveling in a green mid-1990s Chevy Silverado to a flea market in the city of Monte Morelos in Nueve Leon State. It's about a three-hour drive from the border. Officials at the state prosecutor's office said they have been investigating the woman's disappearance since Monday. This week's massive search for the four Americans kidnapped involved squads of Mexican soldiers and National Guard troops. But for most of the 112,000 for most of the 112,000 Mexicans missing nationwide, the only ones looking for them are their desperate relatives. Authorities also lack manpower, equipment and training. Things are so bad that authorities aren't even able to identify thousands of bodies that have been found. All right, so let's talk about some uncomfortable truths here. Some uncomfortable truths. Why are these women being given less media attention than the other four individuals who just got kidnapped in Mexico? Well, for one, those four individuals got kidnapped on video. So when something happens on video, you have a good chance of it going viral. But I think another problem is here that these are three Spanish women. I, I, I don't know if they're Mexican or, or what their nationality is. These are three Spanish women who went missing where? In Mexico. So in reality, people look at this situation and they don't think as much of it. And I'm not here to play the race card. I don't get into identity politics. In fact, I am very much against it. But when reality presents itself, you have to confront that reality. And I believe the reality here is people aren't paying as much attention to this because they view these, these women as Mexican women anyway who went missing in Mexico, so who cares? That's what I think when it comes to this situation. We saw those other four individuals, they got all types of media coverage. These three women aren't being talked about at all because, in my opinion, or one of the reasons, in my opinion, is because they're Latina women that went missing in Mexico. So a lot of people just view it as, well, Mexican women missing in Mexico, oh, whatever. And they don't make a big deal out of it. But I have a problem with that. Because at the end of the day, these women were Americans. And even if they weren't Americans, they're still missing women. And I mean... Everyone should have an issue with that. Everyone. I don't understand why some cases get more media coverage than others. And in some situations I do understand. Like I said, if you got a video attached or something like that, you got a good chance of going viral. But the fact that these women are basically not being talked about at all, I find that highly disturbing. And you know, they talked about in the end of this article how... Hundreds of thousands of people are missing in Mexico and no one is looking for them. 
Yet authorities will step up and try to find Americans when they go missing. Why is that? Why is that, you think? It's because the whole entire system is corrupted. They make it a priority to look for Americans when they're missing or when something happens to them in Mexico because they don't want the U.S. and U.S. officials poking around in their business. Which is why the cartel quickly handed over five people like, hey, these people are the ones responsible. If you watch the video, you can very, very clearly see that the five people they handed over are not the five people, are not the people, the individuals in the video. They are not the people who kidnapped those four Americans at all. But they quickly wanted to hand someone over. Why? Because they don't want Americans poking into their business. We have Congress members who are talking about sending the U.S. military to Mexico to go to war with the cartels. I mean, things are getting serious. Things are getting serious, and they don't want that smoke. They don't want that attention. They don't want that drama. So they'll show more attention. They will prioritize looking for missing Americans over looking for missing people from their own country. And I think that's sad. Don't get me wrong. I want you to go find out what's happening to these Americans, but you should care about your own people as well. And if you cared a little bit more about your own people, then some of these Americans would never have been put in these situations in the first place. Because if you held the people accountable who are responsible for the hundreds of thousands of missing people in your country, or the tons and thousands of bodies you can't identify, if you held those people responsible, maybe they would have been taken off the streets and wouldn't have the ability to kidnap other Americans or other people who are from wherever the hell they're from. So we have a lot of corruption in Mexico. A lot of corruption. And they say it's because the police are low on resources and things like that. The police are all bought and paid for, for the most part. And in my opinion, a lot of the cartel wars, when they're going in to take down certain cartel members, I don't think they're doing it to make their country a better place or a safer place. They're doing it because there's big tickets and money involved. You get paid off by one cartel to take out another cartel. I mean, it's that simple. Half of the Mexican police officers are probably part of the cartels as well. Now, these three women, I actually had a good conversation on Twitter with someone earlier today. These three women are, how do I say this? The person on Twitter made the point that why would these people Ignore what happened to these four kidnapped U.S. citizens just last week. Why would they ignore that and go across the border? Why would they ignore the warning signs? That's stupid. But the reality is, these women went over there before that situation happened. These women have been missing since February 24th. February 24th. So they went over there for this trip well before anyone knew about those four kidnapped Americans. But the person I talked to on Twitter didn't know that. But we had a good conversation about the value of life and how people these days don't value their lives or they don't understand the value of life. If you think that the majority of people around you value their lives, go get on the highway. Go drive on the highway right now and look at how people drive around you. You cannot convince me that those people value their lives. As someone that's been traveling a lot lately, every time I get on the interstate or the highway and I see people just weaving through traffic, riding people's asses at 100 miles per hour, I just know that, oh, these people don't value their lives the way I do. And that's the reality of a lot of people in today's world. I don't know if we've been desensitized or what, but people do not value their lives. People do not value their safety. They don't understand how fragile the human life is. And they make these rash, bold, stupid decisions that can lead to them losing their life or getting hurt or kidnapped or what have you. 
I've had wild years when I was younger. I've done some wild stuff, okay? I've gotten in some trouble. I've done it all. Well, I haven't done it all, but I've been there and done that. Let's just say that. I definitely didn't take the safe route through most of my life. But I learned a lot of life lessons on the way. Along the way, if you will. And I learned the value of life. And now I observe situations. I analyze and overthink situations before I place myself in said situation. So as much as I would like to be in Mexico right now, I'm probably not going to travel to Mexico anytime soon, if ever, at this point. Mind you, other people don't feel the same. There are plenty of people who know about what happened to those four Americans. And now there are people watching this video right now who know about these three other Americans who are missing. And they will still go right across the border and they'll still go to Mexico as if, oh, it can't happen to me. We're coming up on spring break. We are about to see thousands upon thousands of college students from America travel across the border to party in Mexico. How many of them are going to wind up missing? How many of them won't return home? And how many of them ignored all of the signs and chose to go there anyway for a little bit of fun? For a little bit of fun. A weekend or a week worth of fun is not worth your life. If I see and I notice that, oh, Americans are getting killed and kidnapped across the border, then I'm not going to go across that border. It's really that simple. But for other people, it's not that simple. For other people, they don't understand the value of life. And they will willingly throw it away at a moment's notice just to have some fun in Mexico. Now, my advice to everyone watching this video is do what you want. Live your life to the fullest. If you would like to go to Mexico tomorrow, go to Mexico tomorrow. But know the risk that you're taking. Things are happening in Mexico right now. There has been a power shift, if you will. A lot of the lead cartel members who have been overseeing things in Mexico for a while, they've been taken out. And now we're seeing warring cartels. Things are getting really bad. Not only are we seeing different cartels within Mexico waging war with each other for control, we're seeing outsiders from other countries now come in and try to exploit the southern border and to try to ship their own drugs across the southern border. And the various cartels in Mexico have trouble or have a problem with that as well. And that's causing a lot of trouble too. So there are places in Mexico that you may go to and it may be beautiful and nice and you might not have a problem in the world, but then you can make the wrong turn, end up in the wrong city or the wrong town. And you're in the middle, smack dab in the middle of a war zone, a freaking war zone. Only these people are more cutthroat than the militaries you see around the world. You know, there's actually rules and laws of engagement when it comes to waging war for a lot of these modernized countries. Over here in Mexico and the cartels, they're not following any rules or laws of engagement. Often they're shooting first, asking questions later. They're kidnapping people left and right, holding people for ransom, selling people off into the human trafficking trade, what have you. Meanwhile, meanwhile, it just so happens that while Mexico is in a state of turmoil, and don't get me wrong, there's been a lot of stuff going on in Mexico for years. It's not necessarily new. The only new thing is a lot of the people who were in power, even if it maybe have been behind the scenes in Mexico, they've been routed. They've been arrested. They've been taken out. And now we're seeing a struggle for control. And when there's struggles for control, things become more dangerous when, than when you have that one person that's kind of running things. And, you know, sometimes these people can be bad people. You know, the leader of this cartel, he could be a bad mamma jamma. Done some horrible things, but in reality, 
you take that guy out, there are worse people ready to take his spot. In reality, sometimes these bad people are the only ones kind of keeping things in place, making sure things don't get worse. I mean, when you look at the power some of these cartel leaders have garnished over the years, you should be able to put two and two together and realize the only reason they were able to garnish and gain that much power is because how corrupt their country was in the first place. So oftentimes when you take out these figureheads, the country becomes even more corrupt because the only sense of peace or the only sense of normalcy these areas have had is when these figureheads have been in place overseeing the corruptness, if you will. I know that that's kind of deep and that, that might not sink into some people's brains, but hopefully you all are following me. Hopefully you all are following me on that. But it just so happens that right here, during this time of turmoil in Mexico, while these cartels are trying to figure out who's going to be the next big dog, we got Americans who have formed this new obsession with, hey, let's travel to Mexico and get BBLs. Let's travel to Mexico and get a new butt and a new chin and all of this stuff. And it's fine. If you want cosmetic surgery, I don't look down on people who got cosmetic surgery. Fine. But you're putting yourself in some dangerous, dangerous situations. And I find it odd that this new trend that takes off literally while Mexico is in one of its worst states that it's been in a while. So we're having this influx of Americans traveling to Mexico for medical reasons or for cosmetic surgery. And then we have this unrest in Mexico and it's leading to a recipe of disaster. It's a recipe for disaster. And mark my words, let me end this video by saying this. Mark my words. Those four Americans that were kidnapped, these three Americans that are missing right now, this is the tip of the iceberg. These are just the people you know of. There are thousands, hundreds more missing in Mexico right now. Americans that we'll never even know about. We'll never even be told about. They will never make the headlines or make the news at all. But I can tell you right now, this is going to start happening more and more. And more and more and more and more. I can guarantee you all, within the next couple of weeks, we will be talking about more Americans that are missing or kidnapped in Mexico. This is a new trend. This is something that I, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you with every fiber of my soul, every fiber of my being, that you're going to start seeing a lot more news stories like this one coming soon. But while you're here, let me know your thoughts about all of this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And as always, remain opinionated.